Armageddon. In our collective perception, it is one of the strongest and probably the most dramatic symbol of the end of the world. But for me, Armageddon is not an abstract concept. It is my reality. I literally live on the edge of Armageddon. This is my house. And this is Armageddon. I'm always fascinated to see how fast the symbol of Armageddon populates our collective mind and triggers our survival instinct. The term Armageddon is a scary term, and if you want to describe something catastrophic, something that might extinct humanity, something that might bring an end to the world as we know, that's the term you're using. Sometimes financial Armageddon, sometimes spiritual Armageddon. Hey, Ariel. Hey, Abba. Armageddon, more than a place, it is a concept. Get, get you some coffee. Yeah, I'd love some. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. you. There you Thank go. You. So, Ariel. Tell me something, after all your very extensive uh, training in, as a combat soldier in the Israeli army, and with all that you have in your mind, uh, what do you think the most important skills should be for the soldiers that will come to Armageddon? Well, it depends. I mean, what is Armageddon? How do you define it? Ariel is right. Just like the wise proverb says, where there is no vision, the people perish. We need to have a clear vision of what Armageddon is. Maybe its past will help us better understand our future. We just entered into the vicinity of the Valley of Armageddon, the Jezreel Valley. All the way from the left to the right, this beautiful flat area, roughly 150 square miles. This whole valley has mountains around it, but also little passes that allow access from nearly all directions. And that is, by the way, why this valley was so desired throughout the course of the years. Anyone who controlled this valley literally controlled the trade of the entire ancient Near East. And that is exactly why almost every ancient city that we found here had at least 15 layers of settlement. 15 different times it was destroyed and built and destroyed and rebuilt. Um, simply because as long as the roads were important, there was a necessity for the city to exist. I would say that we all, or at least those of us who are concerned about the future, in one way or another, are seeking to discover God. Each one of us chooses his own path whether it is science or philosophy, self-discovery, religion or faith, we all are looking for the answer to one simple truth. How can we survive and ensure our existence? And it is not a rhetorical question. For many generations, the concept of Armageddon was the basis and motivating factor for many scientific discoveries, which included academic, social and theological research. Countless hours of work have been invested in the attempt to understand how to adapt to the times of tribulation. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Look at it. All of the, this is all barley. It's, it's not usually like this? Well, listen, we've got the best winter ever. 
Everything is so green, so lush, so amazing. I mean, I've never seen Israel so green and so colorful. And, and, you know, really? flowers everywhere, even on the banks of the Dead Sea, you find flowers. Wow. It's quite amazing. That's fair. You know the funny thing, Ariel? It's so quiet and so tranquil and beautiful, and it almost feels like it's the calm before the storm. We live in days right now that our history is being written as we speak, you know. It's gonna be worse then. Well, the circumstances that will lead to the event right here will be far worse than what we see today. Really? Megiddo is mentioned 12 times in the Old Testament and only once in the New Testament. But this single reference changed its meaning forever. Right behind us, this is the reason for the name of this whole place. Armageddon. Armageddon. Armageddon is the Greek for the Hebrew Har Megiddo, the mound oh. of Megiddo. This is not a natural hill. This is a pile of debris of at least 20 different cities that built and destroyed and rebuilt and destroyed. Wow. And I'm talking about King David. When he came to this place, he was the 16th layer. You know, Jesus grew up in Nazareth. This is really, literally five miles away from here. Yeah. And it's funny because we like to think about Jesus' time as an ancient time. But Jesus already could visit this place as a tourist because it was already in ruins at his time. That's how old this place is. Napoleon was here in 1799 and he looked down and he said this is the most perfect place to gather armies from all over the world. Look at how vast this valley is. I don't think there is a valley elsewhere around the world that experienced so many battles especially after the book of Revelation was written. Every king and every ruler wished to be the hero who won the greatest battle at the end of the world. And I have a problem with that because it is not entirely correct. I'm gonna take you all the way to the book of Revelation, which is the only book where the word Armageddon appears. In the book of Revelation, where? In chapter 16. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. This is the perception of people. This is what they are afraid of. This is what they, they make movies on and then write books on and they think this is the end of the world. But in reality, this is just the gathering place. Not more than that. If you will fly up above and look at Israel as a full body, what would be the most important and the most essential part of it? Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Yes. And looking at the Bible, you read that the final and the most existential battle of Israel is the battle about its heart. And it is not the actual site of Armageddon. And yes, in the past, there were so many battles here. And yes, in the past, there was a great mourning and supplication here. But the future is about Jerusalem. The battle will be in Jerusalem. And the mourning in Jerusalem will remind people of the mourning and the crying here. that used to be right here. Even in the book of Revelation, when he speaks of Armageddon, couple verses later, the camera moves all the way to Jerusalem. The book of Joel says, I will gather together all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And then I will enter into judgment with them there. Let the nations be aroused and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. The valley of Jehoshaphat is today's Kidron Valley. And the meaning of Jehoshaphat is God will judge definitely a place of judgment. You asked me earlier this uh, morning, 
What is Armageddon? Armageddon is all in the minds of people. So many people today, they live in fear and anxiety because they think this is it. There's going to be a war in Armageddon. The end is there. The end is here. But in reality, what they need to look for, hope for, pray to, and follow is God. And not symbols of great heroic stories of survival. I love my children very much. And if the conversation about the end of the world brings so much heaviness to my heart, I can only imagine how hard it is for Ariel. I wish him to be happy, but I also have to give him tools to deal with hardship and to reveal him the biggest secret that holds us all together, I would tell him this. Faith in God is not something forced on you. It is your choice. True faith is not merely giving yourself to religious laws or ancient story tales. True faith is an essential God-given practical instrument in your toolbox of life. It helps us to focus on what's really important. Calling on God is what defines our truest humanity. Because if God is our final answer, our survival and well-being depends on Him.